Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. And I'm here with a comment, really, from Bruce Bittenbember, K3BBB. He's picked up on a video or two that I've done about the ARRL Clean Signal Initiative. The idea is to help hams tune their radios properly, not overdrive them, or not underdrive them either. And also they're working, the league is working with manufacturers to reduce things like phase noise and, and so on, to get it down so that if you have a radio next to you, it doesn't completely overwhelm the radio, you know, 100 feet away, which can happen. So here is what he has to say. Thank you for all you do for ham radio. Enjoy your videos and have a suggestion since ARRL has its clean signal initiative in the works. I thought this might be helpful. On your reference station, you were using an ICOM 7300, which I believe has now sold over 100,000 units. I don't know uh, how many units it sold. Normally, manufacturers don't give out that information. They consider that competition sensitive. By far, the majority of QSOs are now using FT8 or FT4, I think more FT8, mainly because of the quickness of the QSO, minimum propagation needed, and weak signal mode. And Unfortunately, also a fear of actually talking to a human being on the other end, which is what sideband is good for. On the other hand, POTA and SOTA have really increased in popularity. And a good percentage of the contacts you make in the voice parts of the band will be to people who are activating parks. And it's kind of fun because you can chat for a little while and put that on the air. He's talking uh, here about it's hard to find the relationship between your mic gain and the compression level. Now, ideally, when you're transmitting a digital signal, your mic gain should be set exactly as shown in the manual. Now, we're dealing with a frequency shift mode here. So compression doesn't matter so much because you have to turn the compression off with PSK31 because it affects the phasing of the signals. Whereas FT8 is actually a frequency shift keying mode. FT8 has eight different frequencies, plus I think a ninth for zero. And FT4 also has just four frequencies. Now good old RIDI only has two, called a mark in a space in spite of the fact that any error it makes will probably cause an error in mistyping. That doesn't happen so much in uh, FT8. FT8 is supposed to be a weak signal mode, but a lot of people will put out a fair amount of transmission. But FT8 is more tolerant of compression errors, things like that, because the frequency doesn't affect the frequency. Now he's saying, I find it hard to find the relationship because the RF gain ALC and using the audio scope part of the ICOM 7300 to adjust and not overdrive the signal. Now beware that the audio signal, which is this one down here, this one down here is the audio signal right here and it is literally audio. It's the audio decoded by the radio from whatever and it is also the first audio amplifier before the modulation here, so it's not going to show any kind of uh, disturbance or something like that. You need to set the audio gain so that it's correct, because if the audio gain is too high, here's the mic gain, I found about 44% is right. The compression I found about a halfway is right for speech. And the monitor just allows you to hear yourself in your headphones, and you do that for whatever is comfortable. And the RF power is just the maximum RF power that the system will put out. There's no point in adding compression to FD8 signals because they're either off or all the way on. So you'd be getting however many watts you've put in up here. You ought to just remove the compression because it does create a little bit of distortion. The 7300 audio scope shows like it has a perfect signal with a perfect sine wave with no clipping regardless of how the ALC is set. That's for two reasons. One, that measures it before you start compressing it. And second, you can't put in enough compression on one of these to badly distort the signal. It'll yell at you if you've put in too much compression. As a test, I set to minimum and maximum still at a perfect sine wave, which you will because you're measuring just 
what's going into the audio system. I thought the audio scope is showing the transmitted signal. No, it just shows from the, the audio end of things. Helpful in not overdriving the signal. If this is not the case, how do you use the audio scope? I use it because it's kind of pretty. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's just you're, you're getting the audio. Okay. Also, any tips and tricks using the meters of the ICOM 7300 and meeting the ARRL's Clean Signal Initiative using the popular FT8. And he's given us a couple pictures here. This is the ALC where the ICOM is set at minimum ALC. It comes below this mark. You want the ALC to be below that mark. Now, this one right here, uh, or when it's set at minimum, this is when the A, when matches at maximum ALC. See, it keeps itself from overdriving. But the book tells you how to set both mic gain and automatic level control. There's also the matter of compression because your signals, if they are compressed, you'll get more power out overall without increasing the main power at all. Very interesting. Compression is used widely in the audio industry. And that's why commercials on TV sound louder than the regular programming is because the commercials have been heavily compressed. So it's the same amount of peak audio, but it just spends more time up in the higher amounts. In fact, that's a fairly easy thing to demonstrate. Okay, well, I hope that helps answer your question. Yes, you can turn the ALC all the way off. Now, the reason you want some ALC is if something does overdrive, the mic gain. It will bring down the mic gain to the point where it's not overdriving the system. So the ALC is actually a help rather than a hindrance. Now compression can be a hindrance because it does no good on CW because it's either all the power or none of the power. Similarly with any frequency shift keyed mode, which includes FTA, JT9, all of those like that. If it is a phase shifted mode and you start putting compression in, you are definitely messing with the phase shifting. The human ear is not that sensitive to phase shifts. Now, if you are a trained musician, you would likely disagree with me. You can tell the phase shift immediately. In fact, this headset right here has a little switch on the side and it's talking about phase, whether the phase is in between the two headsets or opposite between the two headsets. And if you put it in, then each side of the headset gives you the same signal and you hear it in the center of your head. If, however, you take it out of phase, it flips the phase on the other one. So you're actually being given a sort of an input like that. And what that does is it makes the signal seem to spread out more inside your brain. I find it easier to listen that way. So I've always got mine on the phase reversed and it seems to help. So there's some ideas. I appreciate the email that you sent uh, talking about the different things that we can do with our radios to put out as clean a signal as we can because that gives other hams more room to work and makes it easier for the receivers to pick up our signals. So. If you have found this video interesting, why not become a member of the channel? Right below where the video is on YouTube, there's a, a join button. Now, if you join that, you can do, I think, like $2, $5, something a month. And at any level, we'll put up all the videos for members only first. And then it could be up to three weeks later that we actually release it on the regular channel. So you can get early views of the videos uh, for members. We try to do the same thing for Patreon subscribers and PayPal subscribers. So there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.